Hi. In this video, we'll be going through an introduction to CSS. Now you may be wondering, what is CSS? Well, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And the important thing to note here is the style. So CSS is a brand new language separate from HTML, and it is the language for designing web pages. CSS is the language we can use to add style to our web pages. Now you may be wondering, haven't we been styling our web pages? We've been changing the colors, we've been changing the font size, we've been doing all this crazy stuff to our web pages. And that's true, but the problem is HTML was really never intended to style web pages. HTML is a great language for defining the structure and the content of a web page, but it gets really messy when we try to add all this style to our web pages. So the people who first developed HTML all they wanted to do was be able to send articles and essays to each other and have these articles be able to link together. And HTML is great for that. We can make these web pages that have a lot of information and that link to each other. But then as computers got farther along and the internet became very popular and browsers started being able to render all these different colors and styles, style ended up becoming a huge part of web pages. And HTML just wasn't designed to be able to handle this, this new styling. And it tried. It came up with these formatting tags. It added the style attribute so we could add color. But the problem is typing style equals quote and then adding all these style properties is just very tedious and messy. And when we get to the point where we have these huge websites with millions of HTML tags, it's just not practical to write style equals blah, blah, blah on every single HTML tag. It's not scalable. It's not going to work when we have millions of tags to work with. So in comes CSS. CSS was a new language that was developed to, to define the style of a web page. And this is great because we're separating the content of a web page written in HTML from the style of the web page that is written in CSS. And that means we can play around with these different parts of the web page separately. We can modify the content in our HTML and we can modify the actual look and feel of the website using CSS. So at a high level, let's say we have our HTML file and this defines the structure and content of the web page. The resulting web page is just a very standard document that shows the information defined by the HTML. We can put on top of that this brand new code, CSS, and that's going to give the website its nice look and feel. It's going to add style. And simply modifying the CSS will change the look and feel of the website. We can actually swap out this CSS code for brand new code and we get a completely different website design. So this is great. We're separating out the content from the style. The people making the content on the web pages don't really have to worry about what the look and feel is going to be. And the people designing the web pages, setting the style, don't really have to worry about what the content is going to be. Content and style are different enough to warrant having different languages to describe them. So how can we use CSS? Well, CSS is great for designing our web pages, for adding things like colors, fonts, spacing, alignment, size, and even more. And what's great is that by developing the CSS code, we can standardize the style across an entire website. So a lot of times websites have multiple HTML pages. You're not spending your entire time on one page. And so rather than having to go to each of these HTML files and adding the style to every single little tag, we just write CSS once and it can apply to the entire website. And that way, you know, Facebook looks the same on every single page and CodeHS looks the same on every single page. We can define that once and use it everywhere. This is a much more scalable system than writing style equals in every single HTML tag. So what exactly does CSS look like? Well, writing CSS code involves defining CSS rules. So this whole thing is a CSS rule. And let's break this down a little bit to see the parts of a CSS rule. So the first part of the CSS rule is the CSS selector. And the selector defines exactly which HTML elements this rule is going to apply to. So this is saying this will apply to all H1s on the page. After the CSS selector, we have curly braces. And inside the curly braces, we have one or more CSS declarations. And these declarations are what actually define the style for this selector. And it's just like what we wrote inside the style attribute. We have the property and the value. The property says which feature we are styling, and the value says how we are styling that feature. So for example, we want to give the color red or the font size 60. And so when we make a CSS rule, we're really telling the browser exactly how the website should look and feel. So this rule says, hey, browser, when you go to render this web page, make sure that you give all H1 tags a font size of 60 pixels and a color of red. 
and we can easily change this right here in this rule. Let's change that to a 70. And now the browser will completely change the website. Every H1 tag will have a font size of 70 pixels instead of 60. So the general format for a CSS rule is the selector, curly braces, and then a series of property, colon, value, semicolon, property, colon, value, semicolon, as many declarations as you want to define the style for that selector. So what are the CSS properties that we can style? Well, just like with the style attribute, we can set the color, and this will specify the text color for all of the text in the selected HTML element. We can define the background color, which will set the background color for the selected HTML element. For example, we could say color is red, background color is blue. And we can play around with the font. We can set the font size, for example, 30 pixels or 14 pixels. We can set the font family, and this will set the font family for all of the text in the selected tag. We can choose things like Arial, Times, Comic Sans, these kinds of things that set the font of the text. There's font style, and there's only two options here, italic or normal. So the italic makes the text really emphasized and slanted. And we can set the font weight, and this will set how thick the font is. And possible values for font weight include normal, bold, bolder, or we can give it an actual number between 100 and 900. So we see that using these CSS properties, we don't really need to use the I tag for italic or the B tag for bold anymore. We can do all of our styling in CSS and leave the HTML very simple. Just HTML's only content doesn't deal with style at all. So how can we add the CSS to our code? Well, there's a special tag in HTML called the style tag. And all we have to do is make an opening style tag and a closing style tag and put all of our CSS rules inside the style tag. Now the question is, where exactly should this style tag go within the HTML document? Can you guess? Try writing down where you think the style tag should go in the HTML document. Now it turns out the style tag goes in the head of the HTML document. And the idea here is that the style is separate from the content, so it is metadata. It is about the content. Inside the body, we have the actual meat of the page. We have the content of the HTML page. And in the head, we have the metadata. So since the style is not really content, it's describing the content, the style belongs in the head tag. So that is a high-level overview of CSS, and we're going to get a lot of practice with this. So for now, let's see this in the editor. So to see what we can do with CSS, we have a simple web page. All it has is an H1, a header that says, Welcome to CodeHS. And that's what it looks like. It's the standard default style of HTML. Now using CSS, we can modify the look and feel of this header tag. So the place that we write our CSS is in the style tag, which goes in the head. So after title, I'm going to add an opening style tag. And in here, this is where I will define my CSS rule. And so my rule is going to apply to the H1 tag. I'm going to have an open curly brace and a close curly brace. And inside here, this is where I can add all of my declarations to say exactly how I want the H1 to look. For example, I can say that the color should be red. Let's see what that does. Awesome, so we've set the color. I can modify the font size. I can even make it really small. Let's try three picks. Oh yeah, that's tiny. Let's try 35 pixels. Nice. And we don't have to be stuck with this standard font, we can try, let's give it a font family of Helvetica. Awesome. So that is how we can use CSS to style our web pages. Now it's your turn to give it a try.